Well, a couple of, couple of, I don't know if it was the last show or the one before that. We talk, I think it was the one before that. We talked about the mm -hmm. gully kit. Snoogs um, mentioned this. Uh, we had the uh, website up there, and I was pretty blown away by how it was $140, this so-called Pro Controller. Uh, so I went and bought one. I got it here. And I'm not going to do an unboxing, so to speak, but I'll show you what you get inside it. So for that $140, uh, it actually comes in this case, which is plastic. And let me see, does it go? Yeah, it goes in there with the back buttons on there. So you get like a hard case for it, which is pretty cool for traveling. Mm -hmm. And you also, oh, inside here, there's also some tools. This is for pulling out um, the buttons, which I'll explain a little bit more. And the other little slot there is for the USB dongle that goes plugged into my computer at the moment for um, the uh, connection. And then you get uh, this thing here, which is different buttons. And these are some other paddles. Uh, where's my fingers? This finger, here we go. There's some extra panel paddles. <laughs> and down here is when the other where the other paddles went, which I've actually got installed on the back of the controller. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so these these buttons here are if you want the uh Nintendo Switch layout. And at first I thought, why can't like why do you need an extra set of buttons? Why can't you just move them? Why can't you just take it out and move it? They're different lengths because yep. of the design of how it is and how far away it is from the board. So they're different sized. While they are the same button, essentially, they're different sizes. So you can't just move them. They have to go where they are. So I've, I've put the um, the Xbox configuration in there. And if you want to use it so it's like a Nintendo Switch, you just switch it out for these buttons. These are the ones that come in it from standard. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, the thing that... not Nobody, none of the video, I watched reviews on this controller. Nobody mentioned any of the negatives. And there's a few, right? I got this out of the box, read the instructions, and not one place, nowhere, not online. I couldn't even find a video of somebody explaining this, explained how the f do you get those buttons off? <laughs> is that obvious to you how to get those buttons off? Um, I did see a video. Oh, you found one. That's fucking great. The, the one I saw was that you use that tool that's in the middle of the extra box that's there and you pull yeah. them out through the face. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I worked that out after a while of getting the shits. Mm -hmm. You've got to use this thing. Because I saw this and I'm like, how the... Does that get it out? Anyway, you, what you do is you, you use these like a set of tweezers to grip the outside of the button and just pull them out. That was not made clear in anywhere, in any of the instructions. So that was like the first strike on my list, which gave me the shits. <laughs> but I got it done and swapped the buttons out. Happy days. Nice. Then the but these triggers, these, these paddles on the back, how the f do you get them on? I'm looking at it. I'm pushing it in and I'm like, I'm pushing really hard. I don't really want to break it. But is there something I need to do? Like, is there a, like a slider? Because there's a couple of sliders here, but that's to turn these into uh, like switches sure, instead of analog. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm like, how do you get these on? Nothing in the instructions. Not, not even like bad instructions. There was nothing there showing you how these go on. And then I eventually managed to see a video where a guy just pushed them on. And I'm like, oh, it's a bit, it's hard. I don't want it to break. So anyway, I just, I persisted and I pushed it really hard and it snapped in place and it didn't break. They're all on there very firm. They're not going to fall off. I'll give you that much. Yeah, they've never, they've never been changed again. You want to see what no. the other ones look like? Stiff shit. You can't. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's exactly right. But yeah, yeah, so there's there's no instructions on that. That was very poor. The instructions are woeful. 
But anyway, I got past that. My buttons are now on. It's all great. Okay, fantastic. Let's um, let's turn it on and see how we go. Got me USB dongle in there. All right, she's powered on. How the nothing's working. All right. What the? F <laughs> how do I? There's a few buttons on the top here that say well, like right that say like um. There's an icon of a switch. There's a Windows logo. There's an Android logo, and there's a like a USB thumbstick, like the receiver logo. All right, I'm pressing that. It's flashing. I don't know what. I don't know how to do this. I, I don't know what the f I'm doing. And you know what? I got it working. Could I tell you how? No, nah. I got no idea. I got it working though. That's, it, that's that's the best ways when they just work. It it just yeah. After fucking around for like forty <laughs> minutes, I got it to work, and it works fine now. But yeah, no idea what I did. Got it working. All right, fantastic. We've gotten through all that shit that did my head in. Buttons are right. The paddles are on. It's now connected. Okay. Oh, I got to map the back buttons now. How do we do that? Now, this is where the instructions actually get a little bit uh, useful. You've got to press the um, the little scroll wheel, not scroll wheel, the little cog, and then press the button on the, or the yeah, the button on the back. It flashes, then you press the face button. All fairly standard if you've used these kind of controllers before. So I've got everything uh, mapped. Oh, and then... then um, there was an update that I needed to do. I can't exactly remember how I was notified of that. Oh no, that was in the instructions. That's right. The instructions said before use, check if there's an update. Okay. Okay. Downloaded, there were two updates. There's one for the Bluetooth functionality mm -hmm. and one for the 2.4 gigahertz um, functionality. All right. Would you believe me if I told you that installing those two separate uh, updates, firmware updates, are com two completely different methods? Okay. <laughs> it does so not just, surprise me, unfortunately. The short version is the first one I had to down like I downloaded the file, run it, it brings up a little little dialog on your computer plug mm -hmm. the controller in it notices it and you hit update pretty easy right okay not too yep. bad right so then that one's done now i'll go okay i'll just do the next one now completely different the next one's not an executable file it is literally just a whatever file you know their own file extension I then have to put it into a different mode by pressing a concoction of other buttons to put it into like debug mode or some shit. It then opens up the controller like it's a, a, a USB drive on your computer, like a, a folder opens up that's from this. You have to drag that across to the, to the controller's storage, so, so to speak. And then it automatically does its updating. The first time it didn't work and it bricked the controller. It no longer worked. <sighs> mm. Okay, my controller's broken. It won't turn on anymore. However, that must happen quite a fair bit because then I read the instructions further and it actually gives you instructions on how to do it if it fails and bricks your controller. So I then did that, <laughs> followed those instructions. It unbricked my controller and did the update, and then it worked. Wow. Right. So it's now up to date. The buttons have changed. I've got the buttons on the back. It connects. Now I'll play some games. Everything else going forward has been fantastic. The controller is amazing. It is very good, high-quality feel in the hand the buttons work perfectly there's very uh there's no noticeable lag the dead zones are fantastic the lighting on the front only does blue i thought it would be rgb let me see if i can connect mm -hmm. it 
Um, well, it does white when you turn it on, and then it goes blue. And that is all I can... Or they're just off now. Uh, oh, that's right. I've got it set so when I pull the triggers, that's right. So I pull the triggers, and they slowly get brighter. So if I do this trigger, that one... So it's got some pretty cool effects like that, or you can just have them on, you can have them flashing. But they're just blue. They're only blue. Not a big deal, but that's the thing. Um, and yeah, for all intents and purposes, everything else is mint with this controller. It's amazing. Now that I've gotten all that garbage out of the way to set it up, it's a fantastic controller. Their Hall Effect sticks, Hall Effect triggers, which essentially over time means they should never drift, or at least in a yep. reasonable lifetime, never drift. Um, and it works great. It doesn't have profiles. So if you switch out a game and want different buttons mapped to the back, you just have to remap them, which is fairly easy to do from the controller itself. There's no um, accompanying software. Um, whereas something like the Scuff controller has three different profiles which is really cool. So I've got like one set up for Fortnite, one set up for Call of Duty, where it changes the back buttons for you. However, this yeah, is four yeah. times, that's four times the price. So considering this is $140 versus $450, uh, I can forgive it for not having profiles. So that is a fantastic controller. And, you know, the fact that it comes with a, a hard case as well, um, and the other the buttons and stuff like that uh, a really good controller but oops i just moved my camera i want everyone to be aware while i rate this thing and think it's fantastic the setup process was a fucking nightmare and not once did i ever see any of those youtubers mention any of that shit. sounds like to me you've got your next video ready <laughs> no. to go I'm not doing that again. I'm just going to cut this section out. <laughs> uh, actually, it also has another feature that I haven't used, which is quite quite cool, but I can't quite think of a situation that I would use it in. You can record macros. So you can press a couple of buttons on here. And then what you do is that you can press whatever you want, play a game, and it records every input that you do. And then okay. it can play that back, if that makes sense. So, let, give me, let me give you an example. So, say, for example, I play a game of Doom, a level of Doom, and I can record me playing through that level, and then theoretically, I can play that level again, but just press the button on the controller, put it down, and it'll just replay all of the inputs that I use, thumbsticks, buttons, all that sort of stuff and redo that level on its own. I'm sure there are applications that that would be useful for. Oh, I reckon you could hear on use it for Nuketown. Yeah, yeah. The way that's been going of late. You know, and you could probably do it uh, for um, like basically shortcuts as well if you wanted to just do like maybe uh, a, a particular move on Mortal Kombat. And instead of having to re-input it all, you can just press a button and it'll play that move on your character and do the, the move, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, that sort of stuff. It also has rapid fire where you can p make a button, you press it once and hold it, and it just like it's like you're pressing it multiple times. It has all of those features. These are features that the SCUF controller actually doesn't have. So fantastic, um, but it, it has a, a few flaws which sadly nobody's mentioning but here i am telling you all about it but that's the gully yeah. kit kk3 it's kk stands for king kong nothing to do with any twos or cluxes um great controller with an asterisk up the top and great fine controller trade. once you've set it up correct once you've set it up mm. it's it's fantastic but yeah mm. day one's gonna be a nightmare so if you are interested in it if i haven't scared you off uh, JB Hi-Fi uh, have them for $139. Uh, the $99 one doesn't have the back paddles and all that sort of stuff. It's just yeah, it's, a, it's not the uh, the pro variant, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, correct. However, uh, yeah. JB Hi-Fi in themselves was a little bit of a challenge because I went in there the day after these released and uh, nobody knew what I was talking about, so I left. 
I went back about a week later mm -hmm. and uh, they were like, oh, like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, it's on your website. It says you're, you've got them in stock. Can you have a look? And the guy had a look and he came back with it. He goes, oh, yeah, we do have it. And I'm like, yeah, I know more about your stock than you do. Great. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's the Gully Kit controller. Thank you for listening to my live review. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Ha, ha, ha.